Here we are talking about one of the most important human resource management functions which is job analysis. First, in the organization you have to study the workflow which analyze the flow and sequence of the work in the organization. The process flow that includes the, in the input activities necessary to turn these inputs into outputs like goods and services. What about the job? A job is a group of tasks and duties and responsibilities that constitute the work assignment for an employee. Then you have to design the different jobs in the organization. The job design refers to organizing tasks and responsibilities into unit of work. It includes describing what tasks, how and when to be performed and conditions under which these tasks are performed. All these efforts are done in accordance to the organization mission. This figure summarizes the main items in the job analysis, starting from the methods and sources of collecting job analysis information, methods like questionnaires, interviews, observations, and diaries, sources of data like employees, supervisors, and managers, and job analysts, the job analysis outputs are job descriptions, job specifications, and job evaluation. Moreover, job analysis is used for most of the HR, fu HR management functions. That is, job analysis is useful in performing HR planning, recruitment, selection, compensation, training, and performance management. Job analysis is about the procedure for determining the duties and the skills requirements of a job and the kind of person who should be hired for this job. Job analysis outputs are job description, job specifications, and job evaluation. Job description is about a list of duties uh, of the job duties, responsibilities, reporting relationships, working conditions, and supervisory responsibilities. Job specifications is about the human requirements needed in order to succeed in performing these tasks. And job evaluations is about the relative value or the relative importance of this job to the whole organization. Job evaluation helps the organization to compare among jobs in order to set its pay structure. Job analysis information includes work activities, machines, tools, equipment, performance standards, job context, and the human requirements. As we already said, job analysis is necessary to all human resource management functions. For example, in recruitment and selection, it helps the organization to identify the job duties and the human characteristics needed to help in identifying the selection tests needed and help in the hiring decision. Also job analysis includes the performance standards that are used to compare the actual performance of employees with these standards in order to accomplish the performance appraisal process. For training, job analysis helps identifying the training needs required for improving the employees' performance. For writing the job analysis, we have to get the information needed from different sources and using multiple methods. For the methods for collecting job analysis information, methods may include interviewing one employee or group of employees and or the supervisor. Most probably with a structured list of questions, which is called structured interview, to get information about the job. There is another style of interview which is called unstructured or non-directive interview which looks like open discussion but it has lower reliability than the structured one. The interview method has main advantage which enables us to co co collect comprehensive view about the job but the main disadvantage is the distortion of information that the information is subject to employees' exaggeration. Second method, which is questionnaire, 
It is a structured checklist to gather information about jobs from large number of employees. The main disadvantage here is different interpretation from different employees plus the time consuming in the preparation of these questionnaires. The third method is observation, which fits the job with more physical activities. It gives us first-hand information about the job, but it is not useful for jobs with high level of mental effort, and we have also the problem of reactivity. In the fourth method, we have to ask our employees to record all what they do in the job, according to its importance and time-consuming. This method is called diary or log. And finally, we have the computerized and internet-based method. To write the job analysis, we have mainly two parts, the job description and the job specifications. The job description includes job identification, job summary, relationships, responsibilities and duties, standards of performance, and working conditions. The second part is job specification, which includes the human characteristics required for succeeding in performing the job. It includes education, skills, knowledge, experience, training, emotional and physical characteristics. We have the KSA model, which includes knowledge, skills, and abilities. Finally, in the job analysis, we have a recent trend, which is called competency-based job analysis. Traditional task-based job analysis seeks to identify all the tasks, duties, and responsibilities of the job, but competences-based job analysis focuses on competences. Competences are the observable and measurable behaviors of the person that make performance possible and successful. Now we are moving to another function of human resource management, which is personnel planning and recruitment. After setting the job analysis, we are moving to identify which jobs the organization has to fill and how to recruit or attract candidates to apply for our free positions. We are going through these steps to identify the free positions in the organization through personnel planning. Second, building a pool of candidates for these free jobs through internal and external recruitment. Third, the application form. Fourth, the different selection tools and fifth, to make the job offer. Employment or personnel planning means the process for deciding what positions the firm will have to fill and how to fill these positions. Succession planning is the planning for the most important executive jobs in the organization. Then, what to forecast? We have to forecast the demand side and the supply side of our labor. We have to forecast overall personal needs, our demand side, and the supply of inside candidates and the supply of outside candidates. When we forecast the demand side of labor, we have traditional methods like friend analysis, which means studying the variation in the firm's employment levels over the last few years, we have another method like ratio analysis, which means making forecast based on the historical ratio between two variables, like the sales volume and the number of sales people. And we have the scatter plot, which shows the relationship between two variables graphically. But these traditional methods in forecasting the labor demands depend on historical data and neglect the changes happen in different factors like the productivity. So we, now using, uh, we are now using electronic methods in order to take into consideration the different levels of productivity, the different scenarios of sales volume. 
Each organization has to keep qualifications inventory, which is done manually for small organizations and computerized in large ones. This qualification inventory records employees' education, career and development interests, languages, and special skills to be used in selecting insider candidates for promotions and replacements. When the organization cannot find internally the required skills or number of candidates, it starts to recruit from outside. Recruitment means finding or attracting applicants for the employer's open position. The success of the recruitment function depends on many factors, like the revision of well-identified job analysis and many of the HR policies that make your organization a preferable and attractive workplace. To be able to attract the stars in your field and you get as you get better candidates, you will have better employees and so better competitive position. Usually, recruiting of current employees or hiring from within is the best solution for the organization. Only if the organization has the number required and the skills required, the internal sources of candidates will have these advantages and disadvantages. To attract candidates from within, the organization has many options like internal job posting and rehiring former employees. When the organization goes for outside sources of candidates, it has many solutions to recruit via the internet, advertising, employment agencies, executive recruiters, college recruiting, reference, and telecommuters.